Hello, welcome back to a new video game review. So recently I've been playing Cyberpunk 2077 and I didn't really get to play it last year when it first came out because it was just full of bugs. Everyone was complaining about how glitchy it was and what a mess it was. And I decided not to buy it on release because I didn't want to pay £50 for a buggy mess. And it's been a year later and it's currently 50% off on Steam. So I thought, why don't I give it a try now? Maybe CD Projekt Red have been busy fixing stuff and patching stuff and fixing the bugs and glitches. And unfortunately, I do wish I could say that the game has improved a lot since it released, but it just hasn't. And after about two hours of playing the game, I had to refund it because I just was not having any fun. I didn't really see myself enjoying the game. And I don't really feel like the glitches and the bugs are the main problem of the game. The main problem of the game is it's just not a very well made game. It's not a very good engine that it runs on. It doesn't feel smooth or fluid. And I think even if there were no bugs in the game, at all, it still wouldn't really solve the problem. I played the game for a good couple of hours and I didn't really find any bugs or glitches. Now I don't know if that's because they've all been fixed by now or if it's just because I didn't play the game enough to be able to find any of these game breaking glitches that everyone was going on and on about last year. And in case you don't really know what this game is about, basically it's like Deus Ex or Deus Ex. It's a first person RPG game set in a cyberpunk futuristic setting and you've got lots of customization. In fact, the character customization menu was the most detailed and in-depth customization, character customization menu I've ever seen. You can, you can edit and customize almost every single detail of your character, even including the area between your legs, which I really don't know why. I don't know why CD Projekt Red decided it would be a good idea to give players the ability and the choice to be able to choose what kind of hairstyle they have down there. But the character customization is quite impressive. There's lots of different buttons and toggles and selections you can choose from. And then you enter the game and you've kind of got this intro to the story, which wasn't very interesting, had to skip through a lot of it. The story just kind of revolves around corruption of big corporations and then a corrupt police force and then, you know, poverty. If you've ever played Deuce X or ever seen any kind of sci-fi movie that has this gritty cyberpunk kind of theme, you're going to know what to expect almost instantly. So the game also has things like cybernetics and cyber implants and all the people in this world. They all have some kind of cybernetic implant, like a prosthetic robot leg or arm or limb. And as you can expect, you can buy different implants and things that enhance your character's abilities. And then you also get points you can assign to your character to make him or her either very strong or very intelligent or very good at hacking, very good at talking. It's very stereotypical RPG tropes. Now, my initial impression of the game was basically it's kind of like a GTA 5 clone, but set in the future. You can really tell they wanted it to be like GTA 5. Unfortunately, the game kind of falls flat in nearly every comparison you can make to GTA 5. It's like a poor man's version of GTA 5 that's just set in the future. Even the graphics don't look very good. And I'm running this game on a pretty expensive gaming laptop with an RTX 3060, with the graphics cranked up to ultra on nearly every setting. And the game just really doesn't look very impressive. Now, I know CD Projekt Red are not exactly a massive massively huge gaming company like Rockstar, so maybe you got to cut them some slack, and it is their first time making this kind of open world game. But how did they make a game in 2020 and they've been constantly trying to fix it and make it better since then? How did they make a game recently that looks worse than GTA 5, which came out ages ago now? I mean, it does look very colorful, I'll give them that, and some of the textures are okay, and the design of the city is quite interesting, it's pretty cool, it's got this very futuristic Japanese inspired theme to it, but the whole city just kind of looks a bit lifeless, a bit flat, and I just wasn't really impressed with the graphical fidelity of the game. So the worst thing about the game is easily the shooting combat gameplay is terrible. And when the majority of the gameplay revolves around the shooting combat, if the shooting combat is not fun, then it just makes the whole game not fun because the rest of the game is just running here, running there, talking to this character, talking to that character, do a bit of driving, do some kind of mini games, 
When the combat system of a combat game is just really not fun, then it just ruins the game completely. And this has nothing to do with bugs or glitches or anything, it's just the way the game feels when you're shooting enemies doesn't feel good. It feels very sluggish, very unresponsive, it just doesn't feel good. I didn't really feel like I was having fun shooting at the enemies, I didn't really feel like the weapons... The weapons are just kind of boring, they're very bog standard, there's nothing really special about them. They don't really have a very satisfying feel to them when you fire them. Also the AI is kind of dumb, not really fun or engaging to fight against. I just didn't really have a good time playing the shooting side of the game, and that kind of ruined it for me, because if the combat is not fun, then what am I playing the game for? The driving isn't exactly that great either. The driving of the cars is okay, but it's not really that amazing. Also, the character models in the game are very strange. They, they just don't look very natural or lifelike. They have this very stiff kind of look and kind of animation when they're moving around. It's like the team behind the animation and the character model designs, they're not exactly the best in the industry. Some things I did like about the game were the voice acting is very good, very professional sounding, very Hollywood movie kind of sounding, and the detail, level of detail in the game world is pretty impressive. I was quite impressed by the attention of detail in every single room, all of the different items you could see, and there's so many different objects you could pick up and loot, like food and drink and different stuff like that. There's vending machines everywhere, you could use the vending machines and buy the food and eat it in your apartment back home. There's just loads of stuff and you can really feel like it's a lived-in environment, it's pretty cool. And if you're okay with having a walking simulator in this kind of futuristic world where you don't really care that much about the combat or the gunplay, and you can kind of get behind the story and the characters, then yeah, maybe this game would be great for you. But for me personally, who sees himself as a gamer because I like gameplay, the gameplay mechanics just didn't really hook me in and the story and the setting and the little details just really aren't enough for me to justify. It's just not really enough for me to be able to justify investing a lot of time into this game. So unfortunately, I cannot recommend buying this game. I still give it a low score of 4.6 out of 10. If you're looking for a kind of futuristic cyberpunk themed GTA, then I guess this is as close as you're gonna get.